So, like, there's been a little setback with my house and everything, but I... Not... I'm, uh... It kind of gives me a little worry as to whether I'm going to get it or not, but... Oh, no. I, uh... But, you know, it's still on the table. My agent's still, like, okay. But, uh... The, the whole situation's kind of complicated, but... Um... It, uh... I'm still holding out for it, and uh, the seller wants to sell it to me specifically. Nice. Because the seller is one of my co-workers, and she's really nice and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Um, but, like, man, when we're inoculated, and I have this house, I'm going to have a new basement quality couch, and it's going to be the best. Because... Fuck yeah. Like whenever, when the world's in one piece again, which I assume. Well, it it's be. when it's when it's more livable as far as the day to day shit. A little. Yeah. A little bit better there. Yeah. Specifically for COVID. Cause, yeah. Because uh, I am still like high risk for spreading that to people, so I'm I'm yeah. I'm the one who should be avoiding most people, and I am. Makes once, sense. Once that's not the case. Um. Well, you know, with with uh, vaccines and stuff. Well, uh, I like to host some sort of heart, housewarming party thing. Oh, cool. We'll, we'll play big old video games with big old people. Fuck yeah. And uh, I don't think it's that far off, maybe? I know this is my wishful thinking talking, but like... I mean, like, I think, like, it's gonna be... We have my, a horizon, my, at least. I, I, I would imagine things would start being more livable around March or April. Uh, I, yeah. I'm just imagining. Yeah. That's, like, most realistically. Because I don't know what's gonna happen when when uh, the, the new president gets sworn in. Yeah. And, like, all the shit people keep saying they're going to do. I mean, like, all that fallout would delay things. If it does happen, so, like, there's that. There's also, like, if the vaccine is, like, acting as effectively as it needs to be. Yeah. Like, all the factors, like... I don't believe it's not, but... Yeah, but it's just, like, all the factors that are still kind of... They're not necessarily wild cards, but just definitely, like, things that uh, could affect things one way or the other, depending on how how they go down. I, I'm saying, like, if things go more more so favorably on one of those fronts, I'm saying probably April or March. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, uh, I get to be on the forefront of it. It's gonna be great. I get to be the arbiter of, uh, and process all sorts of stuff for this vaccine. That's, yeah, that is actually super cool. I'm, uh, Despite the fact that it's scary as fuck, I, yeah, uh, I, uh, I'm kind of a little bit excited about it. I think that's cool because I think it's like real though. It's like a lot of jobs feel like you're not always like doing something that's really affecting a lot of people sometimes. But then like, like at my job, I take like emergencies and stuff. So like whenever I have to do something that's like gonna save somebody's life, I'm actually kind of excited to do it. Even if it's, like, stressful, just because I'm like, oh, shit, I'm, like, gonna make it so this person lives another day. Or, they're like, their house is safe to live in. So that's, yeah. like, fucking cool. Yeah. I'm, uh... I was pretty on the fence about my job for a while, but... I, uh... I'm glad I got to do something good in it. Ah, that's awesome, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm glad that Star Fox mostly holds up. I don't yeah. think there's a that. <laughs> I, 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 like, the, so when I, when I say, like, the controls are a little weird, it's really not. They're probably as good as they're going to be on a, on a game of a size like that. Um, if, if everything was bigger, they could be more precise, maybe. But, yeah. But, uh. I think they're just fine for what this game is. Uh, yeah, I I think it it definitely coming back to it. It doesn't really feel like it's aged that much, like really a day. Honestly, it feels pretty much the same. Because a yeah. lot of a lot of flight sim games and like games like this, I haven't really moved that much past these controls. 
<laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Like, they haven't really gotten any better. Like, they're like this, or like this, but faster, or with like a little bit more precision. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, like, and how did you, how did you like Star Fox playing it was the really first fun. time? I, uh, be because I was doing it for the internet, you know, there's, there's... A lot oh, yeah, there's always stress, stress and the there's a whatever. There's stress to it, just... But if you were playing it, like, by yourself, like, would yeah. you have fun... Yeah. Playing that, or or I, playing more probably, multiplayer. I would probably give it a few more tries, you know, just to. Oh yeah, it's like, definitely like, not it's, like easy the I, first. I kind of need to to fail until I succeed. Yeah, but, it's uh, one of those games. It's like old school mentality, like just like kind of yeah. play it till you like master it, and then like once you master it, you can start doing all the crazy fancy stuff and get all the secret. There's secret routes you can take on each level too that like get you to different levels. So like, nice. Um. There's like a secret cave behind a waterfall in Corneria that if you go through that, it like gets you to go to the, the left side of the screen or oh, the really? upper side or whatever. Like there are all those lanes that you're going down. Like you can like find different ways on levels to go different ways. Cool. And like the more you play the game, the more you learn about it. And the more you learn about it, eventually you can get like that perfect ending where you actually get to fight the big brain. Nice. Which like that's that's a cool thing yeah. about this game. Yeah, you got to get like pretty good for that. Yeah, or, or if you just memorize where they, where things are, like if you yeah, if yeah. you um, know where the things are and when to do them, and if you can like if you can nail that, you can do that. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you're right. But I'm saying like like as far as like coming back to it again after years, like if I just go and look up like which ways to go, I could probably yeah get going the right direction. The only things that are hard to do is like let missions that are failable, where like if you fail them, it completely changes where you're going. Yeah, like, those ones are a little bit. Like, it more seems difficult. like that was the case for for me when I lost Slippy. Yep, because there's a. I think if you don't lose Slippy, there's like a, a whole other thing you do. You go to like the center of the galaxy, and then you go to the, to the solar system, and then you go around um, to the other side. But yeah, it's it's. I'm actually really glad this game holds up because, like, Star Fox on the DS does not hold up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. And Playing this on the handheld, uh, yeah, no way. That one is not as good. It hurts your hands to play that game, and they had like really weird mechanics in the con the the camera's not great. <laughs> that one's not very good. Uh, Star Fox Two does not hold up. Star Fox, the original Star Fox, oh, kind of sort of holds up, but I'm not into so it. Clunky. Yeah, I'm, I'm not into it. So uh, Star Fox is so more than clunky. It's slow. I'm excited to maybe try Star Fox Assault at some point because I haven't played that in many years, yeah. and that one also that one also is like this but better. Nathan had that game. I need to. Yeah, a lot of people really liked it. I I was a, I was like when it came out, I was not as into it because I was way more into. I need to talk stuff. to him about that. Like it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, I gotta talk to him about Star Fox Assault. Uh, oh, he hey. has Star Fox Assault. I gotta talk to him about that. <laughs> yeah, hey, you got Star Fox Assault. Yeah. What's up with that? <laughs> I think we need to have an intervention about you owning Star Fox Assault. Look, dude, we've been friends forever since third grade, man. But we gotta talk about <laughs> Star Fox Assault. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you want to talk about? It's like you're holding it right now, aren't you? No. <laughs> Look, man, <laughs> just just put it down. It's okay. I, I know you're holding. I just gotta feel. I just gotta feel it in my hands. I gotta feel a little tiny disc in my hand. <laughs> it's on the cube, bro. <laughs> oh, you're calling it the cube now. So what? Well, you're not you're trying, trying to trying to avoid avoid repercussions for your your addiction. Like it's uh, more than a game. Okay. <laughs> the cube. But yeah, I, like Star Fox Assault, I'd be excited to try too because like I know this game and Star Fox Assault probably aged the best out of all of them. Oh no, it was Star Fox Adventure that he had, and that game was weird. I that game's okay. It's just Zelda, but like yeah. Star Fox. That's all it is. Yeah. It's okay. I don't think it's as good as a Star Fox game as this game. But it's definitely fine. Like, I, I've played that game a ton, actually. I'm actually pretty good at that game, but it's like... That game is not really a Star Fox game. It's more like... It was originally just a game called Dinosaur Planet that they actually changed into Star yeah, Fox. Yeah, that's right. I, I remember hearing that somewhere. Probably, uh, probably from Matt. Also, Matt uh, another interesting thing about that game is that the instruction booklet, you could actually translate the dinosaur language... That oh, they yeah. that they they made a language for the game, like a, a functioning language. You can actually teach yourself. Damn. 
And it's for a game that not many people play. <laughs> and a lot of people has panned for like being really like one of the worst entries of Star Fox, even though it's not really. It's just kind of a weird entry. It's not I don't think it's a bad game. I think that it really the problem is that it's Star Fox. That's what the problem is. Yeah. If it was anything it else, it would be great. Just have been Dinosaur Planet. Yeah, I think if it was its own thing and it was allowed to grow in that in that room in that space, it would have been fine. Like if they had introduced Crystal as the main character just in general, and you just kept playing as Crystal, and yeah. Star Fox was not a part of it, I think it would have been a great game. And then maybe like Star Fox could be like part of that universe in a greater scheme, and you could just maybe have Crystal be a part of that idea and maybe have this have a sequel game where like you bring in those guys or something that would have been fine by me yeah um but yeah i'm excited i'm really happy that you like this game because like i remember thinking about like like the, like your tastes i'm like dude you would have fucking loved star fox yeah yeah like that would have been your shit i, I like, just no kind of generally suck at these no <laughs> whatever well i mean that's what i'm saying like if you play it back then like you probably would have like you would have played it a lot and gotten good at it because yeah. like I it, it definitely has a did have this too, but I don't think I got to play it much. I I think I think I might have been like on some stupid kid shit at that time. Yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> and like have been like uh, shooting and guns not for me, thank you. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> and then like some years later, Left 4 Dead happens. Yeah, and then I'm just <laughs> That's well, so funny. Oh actually. man, no, no, it was. Just... God, what what was it that that got me, like Die Hard? It was Quake Three. It was Quake Three, uh, and Metal Gear, I guess. Metal Gear Solid One, but Metal that, Gear Solid's pretty good. But that's a that's a little different than a shooter. But it, that's yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I I definitely am glad this game still holds up because like I was ready for it to be just crusty as fuck and just not work out. And it's like, oh, this actually looks like it still holds up just as good as it used to. Because, yeah. like, I recently actually got Panzer Dragon uh, remake. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah, yeah. Panzer Dragon remake is not good. Shitty. It yeah. was... They, they did not up a whole lot. Everything looks like it's still, like, an old Saturn game. It's not great. And it's also, like, got, like, weird bugs. Like, I had a really weird bug where I infinitely flew into the horizon until it, like, was literally, like giving me the best rendition I could ever imagine of going into a black hole and experiencing what's called the lighthouse effect. <laughs> like, like it's, it's the closest I could get to seeing that. And it turned out, I, I thought the game was like loading something and it turns out it was not. It was in fact broken. Oh, and uh, I don't know. I, I think if they were going to remake Panzer Dragon, they should have maybe like made it really done it. Like they should have like, yeah, they should not. They don't have to go. They don't have to like go crash insane trilogy with it. But they really should have gone like more than what they gave us. Yeah, I can't be too angry. It was only twenty bucks. Like that's not too much to pay for like this old game that you can't really get anywhere. So that's fine, I guess. But still, like I was really disappointed because that, that's another game like this that I really really liked growing up. And they did not do a very good job of remastering it because they didn't do much really to it. Uh, oh yeah, did, uh, I, did I mention that I got uh, the flashcards for the other consoles too? I got a a Genesis one that's compatible with Sega CD ROMs. Compatible with what? Like Broco? Oh, uh, I got uh, flashcards for the other consoles too. Like I got one for the Sega Genesis that. Uh, um, it, it's compatible with Sega CD also. Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, I got a 64 one also. We can play, there's like, okay, so like Sega CD, a lot of people don't like remember all of these, but outside of like games like Sewer Shark, which I think were for Saturn, or was, it may have been Sega CD, um, there's a bunch of FMV games that are like point and click adventures that are really terrible. Yeah, I, I heard that there's there's a lot of chaff in the Sega CD library. Oh, yeah, boy. I had this one construction site game where you're in a construction site that was all filmed. And you have to, like, hit the, like, buttons, like, the D-pad buttons and, like, the buttons on the controller to avoid hazards at this fucking 
It's like the OSHA game. It's crazy. It, <laughs> that's all that game is. And I, I had this game. And I remember playing it a lot and never really understanding why I kept playing it. Because I was like, nothing's really happening. And there's that, there's that game. Uh, what's another one? Um, there's like this Power Rangers game, which is notoriously bad. Yeah, it, yeah. It's it's like it's like Dragon's Lair, where you yeah, have to like hit but like you have to keep keys and everything's like but, off time. Yeah, but the, the buttons that you have to guess, like you don't they don't tell you what they are half the time. Yeah, it, it just expects you to just know to hit X or Y or whatever. So like you're just this. <laughs> it's just like this comedy of <laughs> errors of constantly having to watch the same episode of Power Rangers on repeat, and it, and every time you hit the wrong button, you start over on the same episode. It's like that is like a, it's like Groundhog's Day, but like a like a way bigger nightmare. Fuck, it's terrible. It was terrible. Also, I, I remember hating that game. Uh, Nor- Norm congratulates us for idling so long that my ship blew up. Yeah, that was actually pretty funny. Actually, ha. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Oh my god, I got mail. Ooh. Aha. Aha. I, uh, I also... This is eligible applicants. That's an edible applicants. <laughs> Ooh. We have Turn turkey. In. I, uh... I get in on this groundbreaking mission. <laughs> I... Oh, shit, what was... Like, Sonic CD and Night Trap are kind of the big say reasons to have a Sega CD. One game I want to play again that I've been, like, craving to play, because, like, I never really... Nothing really scratched that itch since is fucking Knights. Okay. Like, the ori- like the OG original Knights on the, se- on the Sega Saturn. That yeah, I... shit is impossible to, like... Like, they've never, like, really done a... Like, they've never really done it justice since. Like, they never, like they tried to do, like, a sequel, but it was really bad. <laughs> Nah, that's not, that's not true. It's not really bad. It's passable, but it doesn't. It does not scratch that itch. And then they like only knights only exists as like a background element to Sonic games. That's like what he exists as. Oh. And like, God. And then like, there's the game was so unique. There's not really been a game like that since. So that that's really irritating. And I want to like revisit the original one because I'm just like, man, I just want to play the one like the first one because I think they nailed it the first time. It, another fun fact about that game is that like that's like the one game that Shigeru Miyamoto said that he wishes he made. Really? Like he said he wishes he he like had come up with the game nights. Nice. That, it does it does seem like a Miyamoto game. I know there's a new game called Balan Wonderland that. Uh, the original Sonic Team, who after they quit, <laughs> so Yuji Naka and everybody who quit Sonic Team after the Sega just basically made them quit because they wouldn't stop giving them unrealistic deadlines. Yeah. They uh, they quit and they they're actually right now they they started a new company and they're making a game called Balan Wonderland, which okay. is a lot like it's a lot like the feel of Knights, but it's like it's a platformer though. It's like a platformer beat 'em up, so it's not quite the same, but it's definitely got that feeling. With the environments and stuff, I was like, "This kind of feels like this." It just kind of was cool. It's like, I'm like, "I'm like, that's fucking hype." I get to see more of this stuff because I've always felt like it really blew ass that they just yeah. had all these great ideas and really got stifled by a very dumb company. Yeah, the Sega's Sega's marketing model straight up is just like get the game out and get to the next project. It's not about quality. <laughs> really? yeah. it, that's just that's just how they operate for most stuff. They're, they're constantly like like of of any company besides maybe Capcom and and uh, a few others seem to be making almost exclusively bad decisions that sometimes strike gold. Yeah. That's kind of how they, how they go. It took me many years to like come to terms with just like, this company just isn't very good. <laughs> like, yeah. They just don't make good decisions. Because like, I, like, if, like, even if, comparing to Nintendo is not fair. Just compare them to like any other company that's like, like, like up there, but not quite like as big as like, like uh, Sony or fucking like, like your big ones. Like, just say, like, yeah, you know, like, like, fucking, just, like, Konami, like, putting stuff out or whatever, and other things. It's like, hey, even, even these other companies will, like, still be, like, trying to get the game to happen and be, like, playable. 
but like Sega's just like, just get it out there. We gotta keep the lights on, man. <laughs> <laughs> it'll it'll be out. It'll flop. People will make fun of it for years, but who cares? We're on to the next thing. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing like, with Sonic games specifically. Like I remember, I remember I heard this, but like somebody's talking about like how their strategies basically like they just they basically push one out because they know people are gonna buy it on initial release. And they do not think about residual like yeah. like sales. They only think about day one. Yeah, that's weird. It is very weird. And it's like, and that's why we got weird decisions, like when they made Sonic Generations, and they didn't just make a level editor or something, or like Sega's a fucking. Like, I need to eat today. I don't need to eat. Three <laughs> <months from laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> that is very. That is very much how Sega do- operates. They're <laughs> they're not doing great. But it's not like they, it's not like they're out of money. I mean, they keep fucking making stuff, and they're still in business. So. Yeah. I don't know the actual state of them, but I know what they. Like how they have been making things and what their strategy appears to be. <laughs> Just get it out get to the next project, please. We we don't have time to sit back and think about <laughs> fucking Sonic Generations. We need to get on to the next fucking thing. What's the next thing? It's like Sonic Lost World. What the fuck is this? I don't get it. Whatever. Fucking ship we- it. Mario Galaxy's a hit, make that, but Sonic. Alright, cool. Yeah, we that's what that. it is! It's uh, Mario Galaxy right. with Sonic. Let's, uh, let's reboot the whole franchise, alright? Well, let's uh, make Sonic Sonic's blue. Let's make pe- Let's make one person in particular very upset about this. Alright, so let's make Sonic be able to jump out of the world. Oh, uh, Knuckles. Yes. Okay. We'll make Knuckles yeah. jump out of the world. Okay, cool, ship it. What do you mean that, it's not done? Just ship it. Oh don't, my don't god! Don't worry about it. Wait, and Sonic Boom is even more crazy because it's like they sh- they basically bowed out and said we can't make a Sonic game. You make one, and Big Red Button was hyped to do it, and they fucking sabotaged them by making them work for this really shitty fucking time schedule with Crunch. Yep. They fucked themselves. They made it impossible. And they were gonna have a tie-in cartoon which had absolutely no communication. So they yeah. made their own cartoon. Yeah, because like Just because the people who were making the game, they they were they were gonna be contact like communicating together, but like I guess the people at the I guess the crunch was that bad that they could not even get anyone out to talk to them. Ooh. So like they just made things up and made it and the cartoon came out really good because no one was restricting them, so yeah. it turned out to be a lot of talented people making something funny, so I'm not mad about that part of it. Yeah. Cause that cartoon is pretty fun. Yeah, that cartoon I, uh, fucking rules. I love the episode with uh, uh, where where it's like it's like a it's a misery, like allegory. Like they take this this uh, they do a tribute to misery, okay. and he gets like and then Sonic gets kidnapped by this fucking like super fan, <laughs> and the super fan forces him to listen to his Sonic fan fictions, and he's like <laughs> going through he's going through cue cards, and he says like I'll just read the ones that are PG thirteen, and he's like nope nope. Nope. <laughs> it's like going on for a while. He can't find a single one that's that smart. <laughs> it's so good. That was such a good joke. <laughs> also, when Knuckles goes on a on a on a rant on uh, about like he basically like Amy makes like a really dumb remark that most cartoons will make about like the girls beating the boys or something, and then Knuckles reveals himself to be a, fe- a hardcore feminist. <laughs> and, he, and he has this whole thing that's like very valid and everybody's like what the fuck he's like what just because i'm a dumbass doesn't mean i'm not a i'm not a feminist what do you take me for <laughs> 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 oh man it's so good it's like they keep getting away with shit so it makes it better because <laughs> nobody's nobody's fucking crowd control like controlling that that fire and it just they're allowed to do so much it only like i think like the first episode the first like 10 minutes of the first episode are the only parts of that show that feel related to Rise of Lyric. Okay. Because the rest of it is just not. Also, Eggman fucking, like, having, like, a, a nerdgasm when Shadow shows up. That yeah. was awesome. He's he was like, like the most like, popular yeah, he, in the Sonic so, franchise. So what the scene is, is, like, Eggman invites all these villains to his house that have been built, like, they, there's, like, a bunch of villains in the show that, like, they're, like, original villains. 
and they they like show they're all together like to like have a big evil council meeting, right? And he invites Shadow, but he doesn't think he's gonna show up. We don't know this is the audience. And then he fucking like Shadow shows up, and he's just like, oh, 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 oh my god, do you know who that is? He's like, who who cares? We have some more important things to talk about. And he's just like, he's like, Dick, more important things. That's the second most popular character in all of Sonic Ten. This is Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> and Shadow, and the whole time he's Eggman does he's doing this like running word. gag. This whole time Eggman's doing this whole gag with this, like this gag keeps running with that shit. The whole time that's happening, he Shadow never speaks one time. <laughs> he doesn't speak until the end, where he actually fights Sonic for like a second. That's like the, he never does it. He doesn't say shit the whole episode. It was so funny because you know that was the writing staff scared as shit that they put Shadow on screen and they knew Sega was gonna like show up at their door for doing that. <laughs> and they were like, "Don't have him talk. <laughs> you can't get in trouble." <laughs> Oh man, so uh, this is show. chaos control. <laughs> so this is chaos control. But like, yeah, I fucking that show is so funny. I seriously am. I'm amazed that they got away with that. Also, I'm kind of bummed out that I don't think they're gonna make that season three or four or whatever, because they've been in like hiatus mode for a while, and it's like. I think that because Rise of Lyric bombed so hard, this is never coming back. Yeah, I can see it. It's Which like, kind of sucks, because the, the it was only, really good. The word really isn't out on it. And, like, because, cause like, anytime anyone thinks of Sonic Boom or anything like that, they think of the train wreck that the game was. Yep. And, uh, only people in the know will know about that show and how, how much of a golden god it was. <laughs> yeah. I, it was super good. I, I think like then they Sonic, made that and then they're like, "All right, cool. We we made all that stuff. Now let's uh ah uh, shit uh make make an OC. Cool. You made an OC. Next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, man, Sonic Forces has like the pieces to be a really good game. Yeah. It's just they didn't care. <laughs> like two of. Like the like the the whole draw to that game wasn't just like the the creative character. Also, all of the villains from the past are coming back. Yeah, Chaos was supposed to be coming back. Metal Sonic, uh, Zablock, who cares? And like uh, Eggman's crazy shit. Like you're gonna have like all these all these old villains working teaming up. Oh yeah, Shadow too. All teaming up to beat your ass. And you're and in my head, I'm thinking. That's fucking cool. How is how does that make sense? It's probably gonna be dumb, but like I'm on board to like do those boss fights again because they had some good ones. And nope, uh, you actually only fight I think two of them. You don't even fight Chaos in that game. You don't fight him. You fight Zabok and Metal Sonic, and then Eggman. You don't even fight Shadow or uh, um, or Chaos at all. Oh. And it kind of sucks. <laughs> it kind of sucks because of that. Uh, there's many things I could, I could bitch about. The story has a whole bunch of things to fucking bitch about. The gameplay, of course, but then, like... The music kind of kind of slaps at times. The music's pretty good. <laughs> but, I, mean, I found Sonic music generally does. Yeah, it's just saying a lot because, like, the, the Sonic boom came out before that and that music was not good. Yeah. So that, that was definitely, like, yeah, okay, this is... Yuji, Na y not Yuji Naka, uh, Jun Sanoi, and uh, what's his name? The other guy, not just not just Johnny. The other guy, there's another guy that does comp composition too. But those two guys are really fucking good, and they always pump out some good shit. But goddamn, I wish so bad. I, I, I more than anything, like after finishing like the Sonic cartoon, like the old one from the '90s, like the the serious one, I'm like craving that they just fucking <laughs> somebody. <laughs> Somebody gets all of that property to like continue that kind of story, because god damn, that was fucking good. <laughs> it had no business being as good as it was. It was so good, and then like that just dropped off, and then fucking Sonic Boom was good and dropped off. They just they just don't nurture any other good ideas. I think that's their biggest problem. Yeah, it, maybe they just kind of write them off as bad ideas if they didn't like instantly. I don't even hit. know. 
or something. I don't even I don't even know if it's uh, even that much. I don't think they're even thinking that far ahead. I think they actually are. I think they actually are just like throwing stuff in the trash after they stop. They they finished it. It's like it's done, so they don't. They never look at it again. Yeah, I can see so, that too. Yeah, I think that really is what happens, and that's why we really get like big blowout like like uh, great games whenever they look back at anything. So like whenever you get like Sonic Mania or Sonic Generations, and it's like, oh fuck, this is so good. It's like, well, yeah, of course it is because like they went and brought back good ideas <laughs> and then improved them. It's like, could you imagine if, like, Legend of Zelda, like, got to Zelda 2 and then just, like, kept doing different shit every time? And, like, yeah. and, like didn't, and didn't, like, nurture the ideas people liked? So, like, Link to the, A Link to the Past is just yeah. a, a fucking hodgepodge? Yeah, it's just some new shit. Could be a side-scroller, could be a top-down, could be something else entirely. And, uh... Could just be a... Like a puzzle game, like a top-down. Yeah, like, I always action. think about that. Like that's a, that would like ruin that phrase. Because like they did that with, because uh, like Nintendo's kind of doing that with like Metroid and uh, not Metroid as much. It's more so Star Fox and um, uh, God, what's the other series? They just keep fucking like just experimenting on like it's a fucking like Frankenstein monster. It's not. It's not just Star Fox. It's another one. Yeah. Metroid kind of does, but not as much. No, that's not. No, that's not true. Metroid they kind of do because they had like Metroid Prime Hunters, and they also had like uh, Federation Force. Yeah, I mean there were a and couple of oddball things, but well, it's not Metroid as bad as Star mostly is Metroid. With yeah, the, I mean with the exception of Other M, which was yeah, that was made by Toy totally Studio. <laughs> yeah, whatever the fuck that was. But like uh, Star Fox, I think really did get experimented on too much. I because like they. It's it's weird. It's like this. It's definitely a flight sim, like uh, like ha like corridor shooter, where you're like supposed to be doing like hype shit while you're in a ship, and then they 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 went from that to going to like oh yeah guys, uh, it's Zelda now, or hey guys, um, maybe the controls should all be touchscreen controls, or hey guys, maybe we should do like a weird fucking game with like a bunch of weird Wii U controls that are like kind of a cool idea, but also like. Sometimes it's getting in the way of just doing the cool stuff you want to do. Yeah. Um, and then that Slippy Toad Tower Defense game that nobody remembers and nobody will remember. I certainly don't. Yep, that exists. It was a it was a game that came with the most recent one that was on the Wii U. So like I don't even remember. I don't even remember how the game was played, but I remember it being like a big thing. Um, Man, what yeah, if the that's... next Star Fox is like you're in a drone. <laughs> I mean, yo, yo, they have that fucking uh, that Mario Kart like like game where you have a little toy Mario Kart guy and you can turn your living room into a track. Okay. Like so, so they might actually do that. <laughs> like make like a Landmaster. Like actually, that'd be pretty cool if they like uh, like made little toy Landmasters and like uh, like R wings and stuff, and you like actually do like combat in the house. Terrible idea for children. They're gonna break something, but for sure. Still, I would be cool. I'd be cool as fuck, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's a game that I've wanted to play again. In fact, uh, two games that I've been thinking about, like, doing, like, a just-by-myself stream. Like, just because I didn't want to, like, commit everyone else to it. It's, uh... One, one, um... Uh, I remember we did a stream of this many years ago. It was uh, Legend of Mana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that game. It's like a Seiken Denetsu. Yeah, those are good games. One. I also want to play more Visage. I want to play the whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. That game that was, is uh... so fucking scary. Yeah, that's a pretty good game. I'm pretty excited for Bravely Default 2 to come out. Nice. Oh, they also released Final Fantasy VII on the Switch. Uh, the remake? Yeah, no, the re regular ass Final Fantasy VII. Oh, I thought they did that a while ago. I don't know. It's it, I, did they? I thought so. I I oh. had it for a long uh -huh. time. Oh, never mind. Maybe they did. I didn't even realize they released it on the fucking Switch. I was like, what? 
I just I noticed it. I was like, oh fuck, I can get this on my Switch. Yep, Hell yep. yeah! I I got it on there, and I rage quit at the same spot I rage quit last time. Yeah, share yeah, yeah. the tower. Call everyone over. Yep. <laughs> Definitely a game that did not age the greatest on the gameplay, but yeah, I I really should just like muscle through that part because. I mean, yeah. I mean, once you get past that part, because the the thing about that game is it just gets it can at some point it starts getting a little bit grindy, and then also like the yeah. um, there's some things they some ask you to do so that are just so out of date. Like they just they just did it. They they were like, this is a video game. Do things. <laughs> yeah. Just make the kid, make the player do something right now. So that's <laughs> like okay, that's fine. But sometimes the things they ask you are like, I don't really want to do that. The remake was pretty good. I liked the gameplay to the remake a lot, and I liked a bunch of things about it. Like, a ton of things I liked about it. The ending, I think I finally let that cook with myself long enough. But I'm like, I don't think they should have done any of that. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely, it's definitely not. It's not the same exact game. Okay. They did some things that were like, this is not Final Fantasy the remake, Final Fantasy VII the remake. This is something else. What is this, Nomura? What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> it's like at the end of any any old JoJo part where like, where like the good guys got the bad guys surrounded. And they're then the bad guy's like, ha ha, I've already won. And then, like, he, like, activates his power, but you don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That is such a fucking, like, god. JoJo is so fucking crazy. Like, I love... I love, like, I, I, I fucking just love the fact that that man just, like, he, like, sets up all this stuff. And it, like, keeps giving you this idea of where things are gonna go. But by the end of almost almost every part, you're always like, "What oh. the fuck?" <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and you're just like, "Dude, what, where did you come up with this?" <laughs> None of those things you were talking about are here. <laughs> <laughs> Only some of them. Yeah. Like, yo. Like, it's, it's pretty funny. It's just like every fucking, it's like every time I read a part of JoJo, I'm just like, I look at it, I just, I try to imagine a VCR in my head. <laughs> and I think like, I'm in Araki's house, I'm looking at the VCR in the latest Vogue magazine. What kind of weird shit can I do if I do all these mushrooms at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> There's these hot dogs that fly through you and eat your heat. <laughs> <laughs> There's a meteor that falls on only you, but it gets really small by the time that that happens. This guy can spray off his skin like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. There's oh uh, what what other? This guy gifts you a million dollars. God, you gotta spend <laughs> it all by the end of the day, or you die. <laughs> Oh man, I'm trying to get other ones. This orangutan is a boat. <laughs> he's a boat. Also, he's way too big to be an orangutan. <laughs> he's like a gorilla. Like he drew a gorilla and said orangutan, but I'm pretty sure he meant he meant gorilla. <laughs> That's a gorilla, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's fun though. It's like really fun. Yeah, it's it like really it really it really is a bizarre adventure. Like it just fucking like it really lives up to it because it's it's not just weird in like the things that happen. It's also weird in just the plot in general and just like the, oh, yeah. the, the progression of that plot and the culmination of the seeds he plants is just like, bro, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Norm's uh, mentioned in the uh, the guy in part five that like condemned a boat over a different boat. Oh my god, what the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. 
God damn, I really forgot. <laughs> that, that was the yeah, the ship guy. I remember that. Then they torture him with the dance. Yep. Torture dance afterwards. <laughs> the weird ass show. <laughs> I can't wait for like them to get to part six. I just I just need to see some of that shit animated. And that's like my favorite part, just because oh, my, it's just I think my favorite thing is when the hero just figures it out out of nowhere, like with no evidence. Yes. Yes, there's so many things. There's like not enough. So many of those uh, stands are tell, don't show, and it just gets really funny <laughs> because of that. Yeah. Like, like some of like the like, feng shui guy was like kind of, eh. but yeah. like, there's a bunch of things that just get funnier the longer you think. About them. Yeah. <laughs> like, why the hell wasn't I just read? Like, why was there a goddamn airplane? <laughs> Jotaro's like out in some like hick town out of nowhere. He's like, wait a minute, guys. Someone's been shooting rats with these arrows. Yeah, and I was shooting a machine gun at me. <laughs> yeah, I, what the and fuck? I know where they are. I love, I love that like people in like the fandom like to sit around and wax poetic about like, yeah, Jotaro's weaker than the rat stand. It's like, no, nah, I just didn't know they were coming. Like he just straight up. Was not paying attention, and they just shot him. <laughs> like that, anybody would have been hit with that shit. Yeah. <laughs> like they're just like, it's like, why did he use the world on the rats? It's like, are you kidding? Oh, he's <laughs> dead. <laughs> he's dead. The rats are good. <laughs> <laughs> that that backward sword stance. It's so unorthodox. Who cares? Oh. It's good. Yeah. Right. Oh my god. There's that. There's Red Hot Chili Peppers' like little dick that he has <laughs> when he comes out of the TV, and then he doesn't have it anymore. <laughs> like he just goes away on his character design. It's like, what happened? <laughs> like, uh, it, it didn't test well with audiences, we'll say. Yeah, we realize we should have probably given him a little bit, little dick <laughs> that everyone can see. <laughs> it's like, well. Uh... My producer said I had to put it away. I thought it was bullshit, but uh, I thought it was awesome. He has a little dick. It's a little red shot chip. I thought it was bullshit saying. that I had to change it, but you know, whatever. <laughs> also, the stand that's just feet that smell you. <laughs> they're sm they're smelly feet. Is this yeah. stand which is the best? Oh man, there's so many of those. I, they're just fun. I... What was the? There was one in part eight where like this like kind of shithead character gets like he just accidentally gets more money, and it just keeps happening. The fuck? I'm trying to remember how that went. It's been like a couple years since I read that part, but it is called like the Malagro Man. And he's like trying desperately not to get any more money, but every time he tries not to, he just it's gets a lot more. more. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? That's a really and I, weird. And one. I don't remember like why that was a problem, <laughs> but it was. Ah <laughs> oh, no! Maybe he was like really like paranoid and like thought like he was being set up for some kind of like crime, and uh -huh. he was like trying to stop it. Maybe I don't know. Maybe. I can't think of a reason. Because I, I could see somebody being very paranoid. Yeah. And, like, that could be, like, a conflict. But definitely... I, I'm, I was just trying to remember why he was like, Oh, no! More money! <laughs> more money? <laughs> Shit! Ah! I didn't want this. Remember when Rohan straight up, like, stabs a fucking spider and then eats its guts? Yep. Or beetle, whatever it was. And Doesn't he also, like, stab a knife into his own hand just to prove a point? Yeah, yeah, I think so. He does a bunch of weird shit, and he's just like, that's just to, like, really know how it feels so it can be a perfect mangaka. It's like, that doesn't... You didn't have to do that. <laughs> I, I, I think you can draw a goddamn hand pretty good without stabbing your own hand. I thought it was, like, to prove to, to Josuke that he's serious about the bet or something. Oh no! That was that the dice game. Yeah. Oh my god, that dice game episode is the best. That's like the best thing ever. 
It's just like the main cast just set fucks off from the plot for a second, and they just like dude just meets a real life alien and tells him, "Yo, you can shape shift, turn into dice, so I can cheat my friend." <laughs> <laughs> at a dice game to to get his money? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, that pretty much sums it all up. That, and it's so crazy because he meets a goddamn alien and that's what he does with an, the, that, that knowledge is, can yeah. you become this and you know, do this? I, I think Rohan probably could do that. Uh, Norm's saying, could Rohan wrote, write, I know where Kira is in his head and save everyone a lot of trouble? <laughs> Probably, yeah, he probably could do that. Yeah? Probably could have done that. Also, uh, uh, Jonathan, not Jonathan, Joseph could have did it too. He could have spirit photography did it. Yeah. But I think, the, I think he was the, pretty the, senile, though. I th yeah, I think that was the reason, is that he just, like, he just doesn't have, like, the wherewithal to even use a stand. Yeah. So, like, that that's fa That's fine, whatever. I, I can accept that answer. Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, Rohan could have just written in his head, like, I know where Kira is, and then you just walk over there and be like, here you are! And then if he, if he did that, like, it would have been kind of hyped, though, because then you would have, like, just found him, and you could have had a really fun episode of Kira, like, paranoid as fuck of Rohan. Like, he keeps finding him over yeah. and over again, and he keeps using, like, fucking uh, Bites the Dust or something yeah. to, keep, to get away from him. That'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be really fun if they did that. Yeah, so that's like that's like Looney Tunes shit that's like JoJo's really good at, where it's just like it just becomes like Wily e. Coyote shit. It's it's Looney Tunes, but as if it were very serious. Yes, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> I I want to see part six animated. I want to too. I I hope that that's in production. I, I don't know how they're going to handle it, but I can't wait for the Mickey part, and I can't wait for the fucking Kenshiro yeah. Ralph fight, and I can't wait for the fucking... And I, I cannot wait for them to spoil the Sixth Sense. I, <laughs> I, I do fear that that's just not going to be there. Yeah, it probably won't. I definitely can see that. You know what? It might be there, but they might change the subtitles for English audiences. Yeah? yeah. They, might, they might just keep it the same, but change the subtitles out. Because some of that stuff you don't see. The only thing you actually see that can't really be, like, has to be edited is, like, the Sixth Sense part. Yeah. <laughs> like, they actually show you Bruce Willis on screen. <laughs> All right, he's, he's, and he drew Bruce Willis on a television. <laughs> and he spoiled the yeah. Sixth Sense. <laughs> and that was back when it came out, kind of. Yeah, it's so fucked up! <laughs> <laughs> like, why would you do that? Can you imagine if that? Can you imagine if you're such a like, you gotta like be such an asshole? <laughs> hey, or can you imagine not even just like being like from Japan, but like being somebody who like goes out of their way to get manga at that time when it was not easy to get it? Yeah. And getting it and not having seen Sixth Sense, and that's how you got spoiled. <laughs> and you like, can't like, explain how you got got it because no one's really into it. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and that'd be such such a weird thing. But the thing that's beautiful about that is the Sixth Sense is old enough now that if that comes out and that's in there, it will now spoil that movie for a whole new generation. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, the thing about Sixth Sense is, it's like it being spoiled is kind of its identity now. Yeah, because like they even like even in Lonely Island they like do that. They're like. When Bruce Willis was dead at the end of Sixth Sense, I jizzed in my pants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because like the the whole uh, the whole gotcha of that was like really new, and it wasn't like done before, like in that in that big of a way. Like it was just it made the whole movie make sense, and it made everything like it, that was a really good twist. But the fact of the matter is that the whole movie is that is like hinging on that twist, be, like being making the whole plot good. So that's why it's like. Once you know that, it just kind of. It is. I don't know if it ruins the movie. I think you, still, you can still watch it with knowing that. I think you still can. But I, I haven't watched it in a long time. I'm just saying it's really interesting because there's definitely a lot of people who did, like kids who did not grow up with that, and not only that, have no interest, and probably have not run into that being spoiled because nobody talks about that movie anymore. So like, yeah, 
Part 6 comes out, they absolutely will get spoiled on The Sixth Sense. <laughs> Which is really funny. <laughs> yeah. Because holy shit. Because everyone's kids now. Yep. Well, most people watching the, the anime viewing audience yeah. and the, the general age of people that are targeted. So yeah, they'll for sure yep. are people who have not seen that. So they're going to be either going, what does that mean? Or I heard about this once. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I'm going to start winding down. All right. You have a good night. It was fun. You too. We Thanks. can play Star Fox again. We that was actually pretty fun. Because I, I enjoyed that a lot. I will also yeah. see if I can figure out how to just on the fly switch controllers. And, uh... Yeah. And, uh, so... So we can have, uh... The expert. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm closing the window ah! now. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>